Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio, and of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. It is episode number 159 for all you folks keeping track with the True Conservative Radio program. And once again, there is no chat room in correlation with the broadcast uh, because we have a bunch of digital terrorists that are out here hacking the uh, chat client in question and uh, making a mockery of the True Conservative Radio program, a bunch of despicable, disgusting leftists that we discussed on the True Conservative blog, and for you folks that haven't keep uh, kept up to date with that, I strongly advise you to go to ghostpolitics.blogspot.com and keep up to date with all the blogs. Once again, that address is ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And once again, folks, we do not have a chat room in correlation with the broadcast. Uh, once again, because of a whole variety of Internet little enemy losers that are out here taking it upon themselves to do some other uh, loser's bidding, if you will. So there's not going to be any chat room because of all kinds of hacking and all kinds of digital terrorism that are being conducted by these despicable, disgusting, filthy groups. So if you want to keep in contact with the True Conservative Radio Program, or if you have a question, or you have uh, some suggestions, or just want to make a comment, uh, go ahead and shoot me a Twitter the name is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores, Ghost Politics. Go ahead and send me a little Twitter. Uh, that's the only way I am going to uh, you know, receive any third-party type of comments or any type of interaction with the broadcast. And you can thank those stupid little disgusting Internet chat groups that are trying to suppress my Internet freedom, that are trying to suppress my freedom of speech, and on top of which, folks, these despicable leftist digital terrorists are harassing fans of the True Conservative Radio program. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to steal their identities. They're trying to do a bunch of nefarious activities. So to prevent all that from happening, this is why I am strictly interacting with the broadcast through Twitter. So if you want to interact with me, once again, folks, the Twitter name to tweet is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores. Ghost politics. Anyway, folks, we got a variety of different things to talk about this evening. Of course, it is the, uh, what is this, uh, a couple of days after the Super Bowl. Oh, that wasn't that great. Huh? The Super Bowl. A bunch of, uh, you know, a reason a whole bunch of gas bags get together in front of a big screen TV, guzzle down gallons of beer, and, you know, gobble down a bunch of hot wing, chicken wing, little food preservative side dishes. And we're all supposed to give two rats asses as if this is some sort of contribution to human enlightenment. Once again, folks, I have said, and I'll say it again, uh, true competitive, inter- inter- any kind of sporting event, any kind of NBA, NFL, uh, MLB, uh, yeah, any of these pro Sports leagues are nothing more than entertainment. They are the equivalent of wrestling, of WWE, nothing more than muscle-bound soap operas, because these sports are being orchestrated by the referees that are out here uh, legitimately throwing calls out their derrieres. They are dictating the rhythm of the game. And, folks, I don't even want to get into that debate. The only reason that I'm saying that we need to uh, somehow uh, bring up the Super Bowl, because I know everybody's having a damn circle jerk about it right now. So that's the only reason why I'm bringing up the old Super Bowl, if anybody you know is wondering. 
And I was also wondering if anybody saw that Kardashian slut bag upstage old Reggie Bush while he was sitting there trying to bask in the moment in an interview with Neon Dion Sanders and all those other commentator schmoes. Uh, I don't know if anybody else saw that crap. Oh, yeah, this, uh, this uh, rump-reared, imbecilic, dumbass, stupid, dishrag whore Kardashian. All right, takes it upon herself. Here, Reggie Bush, he just won the Super Bowl, even though he didn't really contribute much to it. But he just won the Super Bowl. And then you've got this big booty bimbo, you know, uh, trying to m- conveniently make her way to the little interview booth there. And completely upstages this stupid piece of crap. Why? Because, oh, she's the Kardashian whore that everybody needs to bow down to, right? The, isn't, isn't, isn't she the new thing that all the slut bags in America want to be like? It seems to me that she was the highlight of the Super Bowl, if you take a look at the damn mainstream media out here. Oh, Kardashian upstages Reggie Bush. Oh, shut your mouth. I mean, if any, you see, if this was modern America, if this was old school America, that woman would have just shut her mouth and would have appreciated the fact that she's with the man who plays uh, running back for the team that won the damn Super Bowl. But no, this is new modern feminist America where these broads can just kind of just, you know, show up and just kind of take credit. I don't know if anybody saw this. I strongly advise you to YouTube this little clip of. Uh, Kardashian slutbag and Reggie Bush in this interview, she actually tried to take credit for Reggie Bush's success in the Super Bowl. I mean, I kid you not. She was like, oh, yeah, you know, Reggie and I were, I, 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 my whole focus was to help Reggie so that he could win the Super Bowl. I mean, shut your mouth. You deserve a backhand, you stupid, ridiculous, gold-digging slut. Sit there and shut your mouth. Anyway, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, we had a bunch of prostate-infected gas bags as the halftime entertainment. The who, of all people. I mean, give me a damn break. I mean, you know that the hippies have taken full control of our society when we have the who as the halftime show as as if we're supposed to care. The who. 70-year-old gas bags singing songs that they wrote 40 years ago about how they're going to die before they get old. Yeah, yeah, that's an actual lyric of these stupid moron songs. And for all you young people who, do, who don't know who those prostate-infected, Ovaltine-drinking, uh, yeah, food-gumming assholes that were there during the halftime, you know, trying to do somersaults, uh, you know, with brittle bones and arthritic joints, uh, that was the who. That was a part of that liberal, uh, woodstock, mud-pitted, hippie crap that is now taking full control of America. Uh, These individuals wrote songs and wrote lyrics back in the 60s and 70s. Oh, I'm going to die before I get old. And now look at them. They're 70-year-old gas bags. Uh, you know, can't even, you know, they're not even a halfway foot into the grave. I mean, these idiots are trying to prop themselves up, uh, you know, through all kinds of modern-day medicine so they can continue rocking and rolling, man. Look, it's the 60s, you know what I mean? Oh, yes, the who? The who? Anyway, I don't want to get too much into the Super Bowl. I'm just saying, if you watched it and had some sort of a get-together about it, obviously you need a life, you need some sort of a significant other, and if you have a significant other, obviously you don't care about them because you're sitting there neglecting them uh, so you can invite your buddies to guzzle down on buckets of beer and chicken wings. I mean, when the hell did a damn chicken wing become some sort of a a culinary staple in American diet out here? Could somebody tell me when that happened? I mean, I wasn't emailed. Nobody gave me a freaking call. All of a sudden, chicken wings has become a damn meal for America. I mean, you know, then you got these PETA assholes who are always shoved up my derriere. I mean, they're always emailing me as if I'm a bad guy. And yet you had Super Bowl Sunday that just passed, and just imagine how many chickens, all right? Imagine a chicken has only two wings. I mean, unless they're, you know, getting processed, this genetically cloned crap that, 
is growing, you know, five wings out of its ass or something. But, but from what I understand, chickens have two wings. And just imagine these gas bags that, you know, literally ordered up about 150 wings for them and their, you know, fat, bloated buddies so they can watch a bunch, a bunch of muscle-bound men in homoerotic poses, uh, you know, uh, chase a ball up and down the field like a bunch of jagoffs. It's stupid, utterly disgusting. Uh, anyway, folks, once again, if you're just tuning in, there is no chat room. If you want to interact with the True Conservative Radio program, the best way and the only way to do it at this current time, because we are broadcasting live, tweet me up on that little Twitter program, little social networking program Twitter. Ghost Politics is the name to tweet. All right? All one word, no underscores, you ass clowns. Ghost Politics. And shoot me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you're listening. Hello? I mean, is this thing on? Is anybody out there listening? Because we're going to about, uh, you know, to segue away from this stupid Super Bowl crap, and we're actually going to conduct some uh, substance uh, commentary, substance-filled commentary here within the next few minutes. But uh, like I said, I know that there's probably a lot of people out here that are a little upset because, oh, I made fun of the – Super Bowl and all this other crap, but uh, I mean, honestly, folks, who gives a crap, all right? Life goes on. Your team wins, your team loses. Who gives a crap? At the end of the day, these idiots aren't going to help you pay your rent, all right? I mean, do you think that uh, Peyton Manning or Drew Brees gives a rat's ass if you can pay to put, put food on your family, huh? I think not. Anyway, folks, uh, I want to hear from you once again. Tweet me on your little Twitter program, all right? Ghost Politics is the name to tweet, all right? Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores. And, of course, if you want to call in, and if you're not going to be some prank calling 4chan Chris Poole worshiping Jagoff, and you're going to provide some substance, well, give me a call at 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, but I'm just about had enough with all this dumbass Super Bowl crap. Let's go ahead and segue into the great Tea Party uh, little convention that was, you know, put together in Nashville or somewhere over there. Who the hell knows where it is? Who the hell cares? Um, but, folks, I know if you've been an avid listener of my broadcast, you know that I am not a big fan of the tea baggers. Uh, these people are trying to hijack the idea of conservatism when actuality. And I know that a lot of these teabaggers mean good and well. These are just folks that are, uh, you know, they can't stand the socialist uh, communist transition uh, that America's going into right now, and they're just hopping along the first bandwagon that seems like a, fee- like a feasible or, or a formidable foe against the current liberal takeover. Uh, but, folks, once again, I think that this teabagger organization Uh, really has no substance or no actual principles that they're standing on. Uh, If you look at all the protests that these teabaggers have conducted themselves in, uh, most of which have been the health care little town hall meetings that these liberals have been, or they were, was it about a year and a half ago, uh, uh, six months ago, they were conducting town hall meetings to enlighten their constituency about the uh, pending health care initiative that they were putting forth through the House and the Congress. Well, the teabaggers would show up there, and they would make most conservatives look like complete and utter jerk-offs. And, and if you happen to be a teabagger taking offense to this, well, you know, uh, maybe you need to slap uh, your fellow teabagger brethren in the mouth and realize that it's no time to be looking like a bunch of uh, half-witted, chaw-chewing, trailer park-living pieces of NASCAR, Dale Earnhardt worshiping trailer trash. I mean, it's time to put political substance on the debating table, it's time to uh, spark synapses in the minds of those that are laying weight, that claim to be independent, that aren't necessarily political. We need to get as many people as political as possible and to show up at health care town hall meetings and you're showing up with misspelled picket signs, uh, you know, with do-rags, with NASCAR or Dale Earnhardt's face on them. Uh, with, you know, a sweat-stained, crustated, wife-beater shirts and, you know, holy shorts with flip-flops, it doesn't make whatever political persuasion you're trying to convey 
look like it has any kind of coof or any kind of credibility for that matter. And that's been my bit, biggest criticism of the uh, of the Tea Party. I mean, I don't think they're taking politics very seriously. I think that they're just a bunch of rabble-rousing, uh, you know, a politically naive jagoffs that are out here attempting uh, to facilitate, uh, facilitate themselves politically by being, you know, nothing more than the uh, equivalent of a bunch of liberals, uh, you know, raiding a conservative convention because, oh, you're against animals. Oh, you're against gay marriage. <laughs> and I'm serious, folks. I mean, I don't mean to be getting off on a rant about the Tea Party here, but I was not happy with what the hell they did at their little convention here in Nashville or whatever pissing ground they had it in America. I wasn't very happy. All right? What I was really upset about is they had Sarah Palin. Oh, good God. And, and remember, this is the Tea Party, all right? If they're standing on anything, if this is a group that is trying to convey anything as their political statement, it's fiscal conservatism. I mean, isn't that what they're touting all the time? Oh, yeah, we teabag is fiscal conservatism. And yet these morons, these so-called fiscal conservatives out here in the teabagger convention actually paid this Eskimo bimbo, Sarah Palin, $100,000 so they can hear her stumbling, mumbling little speech that she spewed out of her little crap hole. I mean, I'm sorry, folks. I have been against Sarah Palin ever since she was vetted for vice president, all right, as a vice presidential candidate for the Republican Party. And you can look back in the archive and check that out. And the reason is is because she's made a complete and utter mockery of anyone who is of the right of the political perspective here in America. She's made a complete and total buffoonery of anyone who is of the right of the political perspective in America. And how has she done that? Well, all she has to do is talk. I mean, all she has to do is just stumble over a couple of sentence fragments, uh, you know, out of her lack of educated ass, and she makes a, a, a jerk-offs out of all of us. And I know that there's a bunch of conservatives that are probably saying, Oh, Ghost, you're not a conservative. You're against Sarah Palin. The reason I'm against Sarah Palin, folks, the first time that she was announced as the vice presidential candidate for the last presidential election that she, the Republicans lost was because she made a mockery of conservatism. She ran as a social conservative. She ran as this evangelical whatever. And what did she do? Uh, she made every Republican and every conservative look like complete and utter idiots. Uh, she made everyone, all right? She made everyone that follows the right of the political perspective look like a complete and utter idiot by uh, hiding this little teenage pregnancy with her little daughter, with old Levi Johnson. And speaking of which, I, I, I read that Levi Johnson is now the Playgirl uh, cover boy on this month's Playgirl. So for all you fruity asses that like that kind of thing, Levi Johnson is showing his Johnson. And Playgirl this month, or next month, or whatever the hell month it is. Who gives two rats asses? And you see, in that same election, it, when Sarah Palin was the vice presidential nominee for the Republican Party, in that same election, uh, th there, was a, there was a convention for the Republicans. There was a convention to rally around the Republicans. And, and what were these Republicans doing at that time? What were they doing? They were justifying teen pregnancy, and they're still doing it. You've got conservatives and so-called people that are supposed to be on the right wing of the political perspective actually justifying teen pregnancy, actually legitimizing teen pregnancy, actually trying to make excuses for teen pregnancy. And it's a disgrace. Because here you have Sarah Palin, who was, you know, ran initially when she became vetted for this vice presidential nomination. She ran as this evangelical social conservative that was holier than thou and all this other nonsense. Lo and behold, she's an utter imbecile and a hypocrite. And because everyone seems to be 
coalescing around this individual because everybody seems to be, oh, I'm pro Sarah Palin. She's so great. She's so beautiful. She's so hot. Because everybody out here is having a big circle jerk about Sarah Palin. She's actually being considered as a legitimate presidential candidate for 2012. Good Lord. I mean, can you be- can you believe me? I mean, uh, I mean, can you believe this? I mean, I I don't care if you believe me. It's a fact. I mean, here is a broad actually having the audacity to say that she'll run for president in 2012. Let me tell you something, folks. If you conservatives, and I understand why a lot of conservatives are hopping on the bandwagon of this bimbo, because oh look, uh, we have a a bigger popularity group than the Obama clan does. I mean, this is a big popularity contest, and it's a disgusting disgrace. Our country needs statesmen. Our country needs leadership. Our country needs somebody who is going to care and nurture this country back to health because we are crippled because of all the excessive spending of all these ridiculous administrations and their governments. We are crippled because of the lack of fiscal responsibility of individuals in America today. We need individuals that are going to be statesmen, not a bunch of popularity ass clowns, all right? We need individuals that are going to conduct themselves as a government for the people and by the people, all right? Stop voting for people because they have nice teeth. Stop voting for people because you want to sleep with them, all right? You know, most of these individuals, and I've said this in a blog in a way, uh, you know, sometimes back, all right? I wrote a blog about this. Uh, you know, most people pick their politicians as if they're picking out a bareback one-nighter, uh, you know, at some ooh-la-la bar down the street or something. I kid you not. I mean, most of these idiots that are out here conducting votes in our society, in our America, most of these individuals are picking their, uh, you know, a politician based upon if they would sleep with them without a condom. I, I kid you not. I kid you not, I'm willing to put money on it. And you see, this kind of theory that I'm laying forth, it's the same notion to Sarah Palin here. I mean, right when Sarah Palin was vetted as VP nominee, I was unhappy. I mean, I was disgusted. I was screaming on this broadcast. And you can look back in the archive if you don't believe me. And people were saying that I was, you know, being, a, you know, a kook, or, or I, I wasn't falling in line with what the party should be. We should that that I should somehow blindly support this idiot because, oh, it'll be a better chance for us to beat Obama. I mean, who cares? I'm for the appropriate statesman that's going to take care of this country. We need leadership, damn it. We don't need a popularity contest. All right. This is not who you're going to sleep with without a condom, you morons. You actually have to dig deep into somebody's substance to figure out what these people represent as it pertains to their political perspectives, as it pertains to their social perspectives, their economic perspectives, you idiots. It's disgusting. And on top of Sarah Palin being a complete contradictory piece of crap, she's a dummy. She's an imbecile. I mean, uh, these teabaggers not only paid this imbecile $100,000 to speak at their little national convention, but this moron couldn't even read a speech appropriately. I mean, she couldn't even remember anything. She, they actually caught her with notes written on her hand. I kid you not, folks, you can go ahead and uh, do the image searches yourself, and you can find them. This idiot actually wrote words and, and little key phrases on her hand so that, I don't know, I, she can keep up to date with what the hell she's spewing, or, uh, you know, she can actually remember some of the ideas that, you know, she's supposed to have in her head, which she really doesn't. I mean, she's an imbecile. I mean, I could give you countless examples of why Sarah Palin is an idiot, but you people continue to hop on her bandwagon. God knows why. To me, I think it's a it's 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 the star fetished American public. The star fetished American public that are choosing who they vote for, who they go and see in the movies, who they buy in the record stores, based upon if they would sleep with them without a condom. I guarantee you that's what it's about. 
Look back in the shows, folks. Two years ago, when you know when Sarah Palin was the VP nominee for the GOP. All right, I had idiots calling me up saying, "Oh, Ghost, you wouldn't vote for Sarah Palin because she's hot." I mean, Ghost, she's hot, Ghost. I mean, you know, we should just vote for her because she's hot. I mean, you know, this is how America, how stupid America is getting. This is America here, folks. This is it. I mean, and then we were shocked why Barack Obama took his shirt off after he became president. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's no coincidence why he took his shirt off. It's all these bimbos that are out here that, you know, turn their backs on Hillary, uh, you know, can cream in their pants and say, oh, I elected that president right there. Oh, he looks like a Greek goddess, doesn't he? He looks like a Greek god. He looked like when he was in Denver in the back of those Greek pillars. Oh, yeah. Shut your mouth. Give me a break. I mean, this Sarah Palin is a dummy, but, you know, I'm just going to I'm just gonna highlight a couple of things, all right? Because, obviously, you people that are supporting Sarah Palin that are claiming to be conservative, and I want to hear from you, all right? Am I, if I'm wrong, why don't you send me a tweet, all right? Ghost politics, folks. I know there's no chat room right now, and the reason there's no chat room is because we have a bunch of digital terrorists uh, that are out here hacking my chat room and can conducting all kinds of digital m- mischief and all kinds of crap. So the only way you can interact with the broadcast at this point in time is to send me a tweet on Twitter, and the name is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores, Ghost Politics. But I could show you a, a whole bunch of reasons why Sarah Palin's an absolute imbecile. And I don't know why you people that claim to be conservative follow along. I don't understand how you make excuses for this dunce. How do you make excuses for this moron? All right, now let me explain here, all right? Let's go back in time for a bit. All right, everybody remembers the Katie Couric debacle, the Katie Couric interview that was just from hell. I mean, I've played that interview on this broadcast many a times. It's absolutely embarrassing, not only to conservatives, but to all of America. I mean, you know, public education should reject this bimbo, but of course they're not. They're going, oh, yeah, she's one of us. I mean, this is a beauty queen bimbo, in my opinion, that the only reason she's where she's at is because, you know, she's shaking her tail around a little bit and, and, you know, made her little quirky little comments or, you know, had her little pouty little face or a little wink that she gives everybody that makes everybody feel funny in the pants. That's the only reason why she is where she is, in my opinion. All right, because look, anybody who's trying to run for president, all right, or hell, anyone who is supposed to be the vice presidential candidate, the vice presidential nominee for a presidential candidate, should have at least somewhat knowledge or at least somewhat substance. I I don't know. At least get her information and her news from somewhere. Well, let's take a trip back in time, shall we, when Katie Couric asked her the great question. All right? And and, and, I, and this is all going to correlate. I'm just telling you, folks, you people that are for Sarah Palin, you people are idiots, you people are morons, and if you're for Sarah Palin, you should be neutered. You are not a conservative if you're for Sarah Palin. This, this broad has done nothing but made a mockery of conservatism. She's made a mockery of everybody on the right wing of the political perspective, and you have allowed her to do it. You've allowed her to do it by sitting here and embracing this stupid dunce. Now, roll the tape on this bimbo uh, about her talking about, you know, her news gathering. Roll the footage right now. Roll it. I said roll it. Establishing your worldview, I was curious, what newspapers and magazines did you regularly read before you were tapped? for this to stay informed and to understand I've the world. read most of them, again, with a great appreciation for the press, for the media. But like, what I mean specifically, I'm curious, that you... Um, all of them, any of them that um, have, have been in front of me over all these years. Um, I, have a va- I have a vast variety yeah. of sources where we get our news to... Alaska. 
Russia isn't a foreign country where it's kind of suggested it seems like, wow, how could you well, be in touch with the rest of Washington, D.C. may be thinking and doing when you live up there in Alaska? Believe and look, look Alaska at Kirk. It's like a microcosm of America. Kirk, Kirk is looking at the camera guy like, you know, are, are you kidding me? Is this a real person? I um, mean, am I am I actually interviewing a, a vice presidential candidate, or, or am I interviewing a damn fifth grader? She couldn't even name one news source, newspaper, or you know anywhere where she gathered her information. She just, you know, you know what what her uh, little explanation was. You know who she likes to read? Oh, she likes to read all of them. Yeah, that's Sarah Palin. She likes to read all the newspapers, so she reads them all. She likes to read all of them. Couldn't even give uh, the United States people, the, the American people, one source on where she gets her information. You want to know why she couldn't say it? Because she doesn't get her information from anywhere, you ass clowns. She doesn't get her information from anywhere. All right? She does nothing but sit back and, you know, uh, you know, BS everybody. You know, she uh, springs about and, and, and puts together a couple of sentence fragments and, you know, she puts, a, puts together a couple of big words that she's not too familiar with, but kind of familiar with. She puts them in a sentence and hopes that, that the individuals that are listening to her don't call her out on her little winging it session. I mean, she actually thinks that everybody she speaks to is as dumb as she is. That's why she sits here and thinks that she can get away with this type of crap. Now... Just to show you that Palin is a true buffoonery that can't even concoct new BS maneuvers. I mean, she she can't even BS correctly. That's how lazy and dumb of an idiot Sarah Palin is, all right? She can't even think of new excuses when she's stumped on a particular question. Now, let's move ahead. Now, we all heard that little Katie Couric interview on Katie Couric asking her, what her favorite news source were, and or her favorite newspaper, and she said all of them. That was Sarah Palin's little, uh, you know, excuse. That was her little explanation on who or what newspaper she likes to read. She likes to read them all. Well, let's fast forward to a recent Glenn Beck interview, and I'm not like you said, folks. I've said before, I am not a fan of Glenn Beck, but he's was the one interviewing Sarah Eskimo Bimbo Palin recently. And I thought it was hilarious when Glenn Beck asked her a question pertaining to America's founding fathers. Now, I want you to listen to this clip very closely, folks, and it's taken from uh, you know Fox News and the Glenn Beck interview with Sarah Palin. And I want you to listen to Sarah Palin's explanation, or I want you to listen to Sarah Palin Give her favorite founding father. It sounds really familiar, folks. I mean, just, I mean, you got to listen to it for yourself, all right? I mean, you got to listen to it for yourself. It's hilarious. Really familiar. Roll the tape. That's why we got to stop looking and start take, stop taking from the barrel and start picking from the tree. Who's your favorite founder? Um, you know, well, all of them because they came collectively together oh. with so much uh, diverse. Who's your favorite? <laughs> so much diverse opinion and so much diversity in, in, in terms of belief, but collectively they came together well, to form a union. Here. No, and, and they were led by, of course, George Washington, so he's got to rise to the top. Washington was the constant yeah. statesman. He served, he returned power to the people. He didn't want to be a king. He returned power to the people. Then he went back to Mount Vernon. He went back to his farm. Uh, shut this bimbo up, please. I mean, do you hear the utter BS? I mean, it sounds like some uh, idiot bimbo trying to explain where she was at uh, to her husband, you know, uh, after getting home after a late night with the girls or something. I mean, you know, didn't, didn't that sound very familiar, folks? Didn't that excuse sound very familiar? That's how lazy and pathetic and stupid Sarah Palin really is, folks. That's how ridiculous she is. She can't even come up with a new excuse. I like all of them. I like all the founding fathers. I like all the newspapers. Jeez Louise, folks. I mean, are you going to continue falling for this crap? I want to hear from you, 646-652-4869, or send me a Twitter, or send me a little tweet. 
The Twitter name is Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores. And once again, folks, there is no chat room uh, here on the True Conservative Radio Program because of the digital terrorists that have been trying to subjugate my freedom on the Internet, my Internet freedom. They have been harassing True Conservative Radio fans, and uh, we just had to discontinue that. So if you want to interact with the show, folks, shoot me a, a, a Twitter at Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores. Uh, yeah, we got some... Uh, We've got some people actually Twittering up. Uh, uh, somebody said, oh, my God, you're hilarious. The world needs more political commentary uh, like yours. Uh, you know, we've got somebody who said that they wrote a blog about the teabaggers. And, of course, we got a bunch of uh, nimrods that are digital terrorists that are trying to, uh, you know, spew off of nothing but a bunch of filth, vile words and disgusting profanity. Uh, but I want to hear from you, ghost politics. Shoot me a tweet. I want to hear from you. Are you listening? Is there anybody else out there, or am I talking to myself? Am I talking to myself out here? I mean, we need to be discussing these issues. I mean, you've actually got Sarah Palin considering running for president. And I'm, look, folks, and just to show you how much of an imbecile uh, the left thinks Sarah Palin is, Robert Gibbs this morning, uh, or was it yesterday morning, whatever morning it was, he came out. To the press conference, a little, uh, he came out and uh, gave his little morning press conference, and actually had some notes written on his hand. He's like, "Oh, let me let me see what I have on my notes right here." And he looked at his hand, made a complete and utter mockery of Sarah Palin. I mean, don't you think that's stupid? I mean, look, folks, right when you have the Scott Brown momentum, right when you have the liberals against the ropes, what? Right when the American people have some sort of momentum to scare these liberals into submission. Dumbass Sarah Palin comes out and makes a complete idiot out of all of us. She makes a complete idiot out of all of us. All right? I mean, give me a break. She makes a complete and utter idiot out of all of us. I mean, can, uh, can we hear both of those clips one more time, and then we're going to move on a little bit to Nancy Pelosi's dumbass. All right, let, let's hear. Uh, let's hear about where she reads her news again. I mean, can, can we can we play that again? It's the let, let's just hear. It. Go ahead, roll the damn footage. Your worldview. I was curious, what newspapers and magazines did you regularly read before you were tapped? for this to stay informed and to understand I've the world. read most of them, again, with a great appreciation for the press, for the media. But like what I mean specifically, I'm curious that you... Um, all of them, any of them that um, have, have been in front of me over all these years. Um, I, have a a I have a vast variety of sources where we get our news. To Alaska isn't a foreign country where it's kind of suggested it seems like, wow, how could you keep in touch with what the rest of Washington, D.C. may be thinking and doing when you live up there in Alaska? Believe me, Alaska is like a microcosm of America. All right, now... We all heard that she reads all the newspapers. So which is one of her favorite founding fathers? I mean, let, uh, Glenn Beck asked her on the Fox News program that he has. Let, let's go ahead. Roll that tape of Glenn Beck asking her about who's her favorite founding father. Stop looking and start take, stop taking from the barrel and start picking from the tree. Who's your favorite founder? Um, you know, well, all of them because they came collectively together with so much all of them diverse, Who's your <laughs> so much diverse opinion and so much diversity in, in in terms of belief. But collectively, they came together to See form this union. Here. No, and and they were led by, of course, George Washington. So he's got to rise to the top. Washington was the consummate statesman. He served. He Here's returned power to the people. He didn't want to be a king. He returned power to the people. Then he went back to Mount Vernon. He went back to his farm. You stupid broad. Anyway, folks, once again, I mean, if you're hopping on the Sarah Palin bandwagon, you're an idiot. And if you think that she's going to be any kind of a viable candidate for a 2012 presidential nominee for the conservative or teabagger or whatever party, you're shooting yourself in the balls, son. You are shooting yourself in the balls, and you're basically giving Barack Obama a second term as the executive, uh, chief executive, and you are going to give 
the liberals another chance in trying to undercut the conservative wing, or what's left of the conservative wing, in the American Congress. I mean, don't you understand by, you know, backing up or, you know, bowing down or, you know, trying to uh, back up this Sarah Palin as some sort of a viable political alternative that you're adding fodder to the liberal regime, you stupid morons? I mean, to be completely honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if Sarah Palin is a closet liberal. I mean, I just find it funny that, you know, she's sitting here talking all this malarkey against Obama, talking all this malarkey against the liberals, and yet where does she go to unearth her little family demons? Well, none other than Obama's right-hand man, Oprah Winfrey, Harpo Productions, huh? Oh, yeah, I mean, we all saw that episode of dumbass Sarah Palin with her stupid dumbass deer-in-the-headlights mug sitting there on Oprah Winfrey show. Somebody who's supposed to be anti-Obama, somebody who's supposed to be going rogue, and supposed to be anti-left. Here this bimbo is, going on this uh, ridiculous Oprah Winfrey show. All right? Oprah Winfrey show. Give me a break. I mean, it, make, it makes me sick. I mean, what hypocrisy. And you see, because Sarah Palin is such a pathetic hypocrite, it makes us look like hypocrites. It makes us look like imbeciles. So that's why me and anyone who's a, a true conservative, a real conservative, somebody who believes in the Constitution and somebody who wants to bring back what America used to be, we cannot acknowledge this idiot Eskimo bimbo Sarah Palin and her hypocritical contradictory ways. We have to just disassociate ourselves from this piece of crap. I mean, we can't acknowledge her. Uh, it, it's over. I mean, that's enough. You know, you know, here I've got, uh, I mean, you know, here I've got people emailing me up on the email address. And, of course, the email address, folks, is ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. I've got people asking me to run for something, you know, since I'm so passionate that I provide so much substance on this broadcast and on my blogs that I should go out and run for something. Well, you know what? I've been actually considering I've been actually entertaining that idea of attempting to run for something. But you see, folks, I'm conducting this broadcast, and I've been conducting this broadcast for almost four years, and it seems to me that no one's listening. It seems to me that the only people that are listening are those leftist assholes that are attempting to suppress my freedom of speech, that are trying to prevent me from uh, conducting this true conservative commentary. Now, the only way that I'll actually entertain a run for some sort of public office is if I know that the public is interested, that I know that the public wants it because it is public office. So I know that there's individuals that email me up. They're Twittering right now, as a matter of fact. Ghost Politics is the Twitter name. They're Twittering me up saying, yeah, Ghost, go. You should run for something. Well, I want to know if you want me to run for something. I want to know if the public is serious. All right? I mean, that, that's what I want to know. I mean, go out there and l let me know if you really think it's a viable idea. Why don't you let everybody in the mainstream media know about the true conservative radio program? Let them know about the message that's being conveyed on this uh, broadcast, folks. I mean, spread the word about the true conservative movement out here. Let everybody know about ghosts from True Conservative Radio, and let them know that we're serious about taking our country back. Prove to me that the public wants to see true change. Prove to me that the country does not want Maoist communism. Prove to me, and then I'll consider running for something. Then I'll consider putting my life on the line, because I guarantee you folks, if I ran for something of public office in this country, I guarantee that these leftist, disgusting, despicable scoundrels will attempt some sort of jeopardization of my life. They will attempt to do something to me. I guarantee it. They couldn't handle somebody like me. I 
All right? I mean, we, they couldn't handle somebody like me. I, I guarantee you. So let me tell you, I, I will entertain the idea of running for president. But I want to know if, if you're serious. I want to know if I'm going to conduct myself in the public eye, if I'm going to put my own money where my mouth is, if I'm going to raise funds, if I'm going to campaign, I want to make sure you're going to be there. I want to make sure that you're really serious about changing America. I want to make sure that you're really serious about conveying the true conservative principles. I want to know if you're serious. So go out there and spread the word. Let everybody know that true conservatism is still alive, and it will, and I repeat, it will rise again. I guarantee you, folks. I guarantee it. And for all you idiots tweeting me up about all this crap, you go blow it out your ass. All right? All right, blow it out your ass, all right? You idiots that don't like ghosts from the true conservative radio program, you go blow it out your hole. You're just mad because I'm exposing the contradictions within your leftist ideology, you pieces of ungrateful crap. But no, you know, these leftists, these leftists will say, no, we need leftist communist revolutionaries to take control of the bureaucratic system to lead us into a new communist socialist America. Yeah, because that's what Lenin and Mao believe. They believe that communist intellectuals should reign the dictatorship of the proletariat because it is communist intellectuals that know better above everybody else. Well, let's talk about some of the modern-day liberal authority figures that are deemed intellectuals in leftist America. Let's talk a little bit about Nancy Plastic Face Pelosi. That's right. I'm talking about Nancy Plastic Face Pelosi. And the reason I'm bringing her up, folks, is because uh, according to Judicial Watch and according to uh, a couple of blogs out here, uh, one of the blogs, directorblue.blogspot, uh, apparently Nancy Pelosi has been utilizing her authority as Speaker of the House to authorize private military planes to, esc- to escort her and her children to and from Washington, D.C., uh, to and from uh, you know, a variety of different locations across the United States and the world, on our taxpaying dollar, on your dime. Now, what these people do, the Speaker of the House, she, uh, you know, authorizes these, uh, you know, these little travel arrangements, all right? And it costs the taxpayer between five to $20,000 per hour to operate these military planes. Now, of course, the Speaker and her passengers do reimburse the taxpayer for those costs, those military flights. But, I mean, guess how much they're only reimbursing the taxpayer, all right? I remember, these are military flights that cost five to $20,000 per hour. Well, Nancy Pelosi and her passengers are reinforcing the taxpayer $120 to $400 for each flight. Yeah. I mean, ever since she took over as the uh, Speaker of the House in 06, I mean, she has been using and abusing the military uh, airline or the military jets like they're going out of style. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, here's just a few of the uh, of the traveling arrangements that she authorizes, the mem- memorandums, all right, the memorandums that she uh, you know, uh, wrote out for herself. I mean, here's uh, February 22nd, 2007. Speaker Pelosi authorizes a military jet uh, for her travel needs for her son, Paul Pelosi Jr. That, that's it. You know, that's all there is to it. There was nobody else on the plane except for Paul Pelosi Jr., on February 22nd, 2007. Here's another one. April 13th, 
military authorization, uh, a memorandum was written by Pelosi to authorize the, her daughter and her son-in-law and her grandson to travel on a military plane. Yeah. From San Francisco to Washington, D.C. Military plane on our taxpaying dollar. June 15, 2007, another military jet is used for Paul Pelosi, Jr. From Washington, D.C. to San Francisco. I mean, this is just a disgrace, folks, and we're just supposed to accept this? July 9, 2007, a military jet is used for Paul again. This time from San Francisco to Washington, D.C. I mean, it's... And the list goes on and on. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, what's what's the deal here, folks? What's the deal here? And you know what? On top of all that, folks, on top of the fact that, um, you know, Plastic Face Pelosi is utilizing all this uh, taxpayer expenditures on military flights for her and her family, on top of which, she is uh she's incurred over two million dollars over a two year period in perks and little amenities that she had to buy on the taxpayer's dime. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's a couple of those little perks that she gave that were necessity according to these bureaucrats. Here here's a little bit of it, all right? Uh, here we got the Pelosi, and uh, you know uh, I, I don't know who the hell else. Uh, other uh, government leaders, all right, and their spouses, you know, incurred a humongous debt, uh, you know, in this flight from uh, Tel Aviv to Baghdad, or excuse me, traveling from Washington D.C. through Tel Aviv to Baghdad. On May 15, 2008, they incurred a whole humongous bar tab. Uh, they got bottles, and let me, let me repeat this again, bottles of liquor. Why you would need bottles of liquor when you're supposed to be visiting the troops, assuming that's why they went to Baghdad. And let me, let me tell you the bottles they brought with them, okay? Let me, let me just repeat, and this is on taxpayer dime. Nancy Pelosi, all right? and other members of Congress and their spouses. Of course, I, I would probably venture to say they're mostly left-leaning. Well, let's, let's hear the drinking repertoire. Drinking repertoire of these uh, liberals and see how rich that they actually uh, like, to, uh, like, to, like to drink, how, how they like to live. We've got Johnny Walker Red. Okay, 750 milliliter bottle of scotch. Grey Goose Vodka, two bottles of that, all right? We got E&J Brandy. We got Bailey's Irish Cream, Maker's Mark, Covassier Cognac. Oh, they're drinking rich, huh? Oh, Covassier Cognac Reserve, uh, you know, some of the special stuff, some of the good stuff. Bacardi Light Rum, Jim Beam, some more Curvassier, Beef Eater Gin, Dewar's White Label, Bombay Sapphire Gin, Jack Daniels, Coronas, two 12-pack of Coronas, some Canadian Dry Tonic Water, and, uh, you know, some Merlots and some Pinot Grino Wines. I mean, you know... I mean, are you kidding me, folks? This is these were all expenditures uh, certified by Plastic Face Pelosi. I mean, what the hell do you have to say about it? This is our taxpaying dollars. This is the left wing liberal uh, for the people organization. This political party that you elected, that you allowed to take power, and what are they doing? They are using your taxpaying dollars in the midst of one of the worst recessions to hit. America and modern history, and yet Pelosi has the audacity to not only use the military jets as her own private Lear fleet, but she's also billing 
alcoholic beverages on the American taxpaying dime. Welcome to America, folks. Welcome to America. Let me go ahead and take some calls here, because obviously nobody out there in Twitter land gives two rats asses. Everybody has got a you know Kentucky Fried Chicken grease thumb shoved so up, far up their shit funnel that they don't really care that these damn leftist pieces of crap are using our taxpaying dollars to pay for their little extravagant little perk-infested lifestyles. I mean, this is one of the worst recessions in modern times, and these damn scumbags have the audacity to sit here and spend all this money? And on top of which, folks, they're adding more and more to the American taxpaying bill. $3.8 trillion more, to be exact. Six four six six five two four eight six nine, and of course, folks, if you want to, you know, shoot me a tweet, go ahead. Ghost Politics is the Twitter name, and as, as a matter of fact, follow me on Twitter. It's the best way to figure out when I'm going to conduct these live broadcasts, which are sporadic. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. We're going to take a few callers here, and hopefully, they're not a bunch of dumbass digital terroristic pieces of garbage that are out here spewing nothing but a bunch of filth and vile crap for no cause whatsoever other than some, uh, you know, Internet jerk-off who happens to run a few message boards or some stupid Internet website. Anyway, 650, you're on the air. All right, Ghost, please just what? stop. Just let Bill Wagner handle it. He'll do what's right. Ah, shut your stupid mouth. There, there, there's another one right there, folks. There, there's another moron for America. Two four eight, you're on the air. Hello, hey. Um, I just want to say that I agree with with uh, you about Sarah Palin, but uh, you suck dick. Yep. Here we go again. Another another idiot. Two four eight six one three. Uh, yeah, that's another one. Another one that goes into the damn list. I'm telling you that these people think that this is a joke. And for you people that aren't aware who these idiots are that are prank calling. These are these stupid, dumb, idiot kids from 4chan or E-bombs or whatever the hell they want to call themselves. They're a little upset right now uh, because I made their little leader, Chris Poole, or a.k.a. Moot, I made this stupid little moron look lower than a leprechaun's nutsack. I made him look like a red-headed, four-eyed, freckle-faced, beaten leftist stepchild that he is on my blog. And as you can see from the comments of that blog, they weren't particularly happy with the fact that I made Chris Poole look like the piece of crap that he is. And this is the response by all these idiots calling up to my broadcast and prank calling, uh, harassing my fans, you know, uh, digitally terrorizing individuals uh, who happen to be fans of the True Conservative Radio program. I mean, these individuals have harassed my fans. Uh, they have... Uh, tried to uh, release certain fans' identities. Uh, they've tried to obtain phone numbers and, and all kinds of personal information from fans of the True Conservative Radio Program. These people are digital terrorists. And this is why I say that uh, 4chan needs to be held accountable. And since no judiciary or no, nobody from the judicial branch or nobody from our justice system is going to hold 4chan accountable, then we need to hold 4chan accountable. And I'm serious, folks. I mean, you know, uh, I was watching Meet the Press this past Sunday. Uh, and Brennan, uh, who happens to uh, be a big wig in the National Security Agency, the NSA, spoke a little bit about cyber terrorism and digital terrorism. And I'm going to paraphrase what he said. He said that the people as well as government and private sector, need to come together to identify and eliminate cyber terrorism. And you see, folks, this is what I tried to allude to in the blog about Moot and about Chris Poole, is that if the, ju if the justice system is not going to prosecute 4chan and e-bombs and all these websites that are promoting criminality, that are utilizing children under the age of 18 to do nefarious criminal acts, well then, folks, us as conservatives, us as parents, us as patriots of America, we need to take it upon ourselves 
to hold these individuals accountable. Now, obviously, it is completely impossible to hold every enemy loser uh, that patronizes little, little stupid websites accountable. But there are leaders to these organizations, folks. And, you know, of course, I've already shown you what the leader or the founder of 4chan looks like. And, of course, he has a variety of different speaking engagements because, well, folks, I mean, you would think that he'd be prosecuted for the type of criminality that he has induced. Instead, he's being invited to Time Magazine, uh, you know, little uh, soirees. He's being invited to Ivy League colleges across the country (laughs) because of his influence, quote-unquote, on the American youth via the the internet. So what I'm saying to you is, folks, and for, I have a lot of true conservative fans that listen to me on a consistent basis that ask me, what can I do to help this country move forward? What can I do uh, to help America progress instead of digress? Well, folks, one of the things that we can do is start holding these assholes that are directly responsible for America's ills We need to hold them responsible for what they have done. And one of the people that we need to hold responsible, obviously, is this idiot who founded 4chan. Because, I mean, you you could do the research yourself, folks. I'm not yanking this out of my derriere. I mean, this 4chan is a digital terrorist organization, in my view. I mean, uh, this stupid little message board has been traced back to bomb threats, dirty bomb threats, uh, school shootings, uh, you know, I mean, I, I can go on and on. I mean, uh, th- th- this is a notorious website to distribute and dispense child pornography. It's a disgusting, filthy place on the Internet. And yet uh, we've actually got Ivy League colleges inviting the founder of this stupid, dumbass website to their campus to talk to their student body. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Well, I'll tell you, folks, it's the same reason why our liberal government keeps funding criminal elements like ACORN. It's the same reason. These people are trying to agitate America. These people are trying to push our limits of freedom. I mean, do you understand this, folks? They are trying to, get, they're trying to rid our country of the American Constitution And the way to do that is to agitate it and through any means necessary, if it means promoting criminality, if it means uh, destroying uh, the middle class, if it means, uh, you know, intimidation, harassment, digital terrorism, it doesn't matter. As long as they achieve their little leftist idealism, they don't care. So we should start holding these people accountable. And by God, uh, you know, the next time... I hear that Moot is going to speak somewhere, you damn well better know that I personally am going to take a flight or or take a a trip down to wherever the hell he's going to speak, and I'm going to try to, I'd confront the bastard myself. I I mean, I'd, I'd like to ask him, I mean, you know, how do you feel, Moot? about contributing to the downfall of America just so that you can look, uh, you know, a little fruity in your little stupid, dumbass little uh, skinny lapel suit when you visited the little Time Magazine Awards, huh? I mean, it's a disgrace. It's disgusting. This is a person that needs to be held accountable. And let me tell you, if I hear that he's speaking anywhere, I will personally go myself and hold him accountable. And if I'm not there, I hope you do it. Because we need to do it. This idiot thinks that he can just get by through life, uh, you know, uh, uh, mesmerizing, hypnotizing, and bamboozling our children to do illegal activities to make him famous, to make him rich. And these stupid, dumbass kids don't know any better. They're stupid. I mean, you've heard them call up. They're dumb. I mean, they already made a millionaire out of Eric Bauman. The stupid idiot who made, who made e-bombs, that's, a, that's the next idiot picture I'm going to post. That's another idiot that needs to be held accountable. All right, uh, Eric Bauman and his dad, they both need to be held accountable for uh, turning our youth into a bunch of nimrodic uh, uh, buffooneries that don't know their asses from their elbow. I mean, you know, their, their, their damn futures are being sold out right from under him, and instead, oh, I'm going to do a prank call. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide free content to 
e-bombs world and make them $17 million while I just sit here in my mommy's room and play with my wee-wee. Welcome to America, folks. Welcome to America. Anyway, we are in the second hour of the True Conservative Radio Program. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, if you're looking for a chat room in correlation with this broadcast, there isn't one. And the reason is is because these digital terrorists that I was just discussing that have hacked my chat room, uh, that are digitally harassing uh, the true conservative radio fans that are trying to suppress my Internet freedom and trying to suppress my freedom of speech, uh, these individuals uh, you know, just won't quit, so we're just not going to have the chat room anymore. It's unfortunate. But you can still interact with the True Conservative Radio program by sending me a little tweet on the little Twitter program. And, of course, folks, the, the tweet name is Ghost Politics. That's the Twitter name. Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores. Uh, you know, I, I want to hear from you. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to something else. We all know that Nancy Pelosi is using and abusing her power, and it's obvious that the liberals and the left over there in California are going to continue to elect her, and they're going to continue to embrace this uh, you know, vulgar display of power. Uh, so, I mean, there's pretty much nothing to say about that. The only way that we're going to take Nancy Pelosi out of power is if we unelect all these liberal scumbags that are in power today. And that doesn't mean replace them with Republicans, because, folks, the Republicans are the same crap, different plate. All right? I mean, these individuals are claiming to be fiscal conservatives, these Republicans out here, and yet in the same breath they're trying to save Medicaid. In the same breath they're trying to save Social Security. How the hell can you be anti-government spending, and how can you be fiscally conservative when you're promoting two socialistic programs like Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security? It, it's an oxymoron. It doesn't exist. It's false. So that's why I'm saying, folks, these individuals that are out here that are supposed to be you know, politicians, these individuals aren't uh, – they're not in opposition. Democrat, Republican, it's the same crap. Different plate. So it doesn't surprise me Nancy Plastic Face Pelosi is using and abusing the American tax system. I mean – I mean, let's be honest, folks. I mean, look at what they've done to us thus far. I mean, they have allowed these Wall Street financial institutions raid the American tax system so they can get themselves big bonuses. Then in the same breath, these liberals are trying to turn uh, the tables and say, well, we want our money back. We want our money back, even though these idiots gave them the money. They're trying to, you know, cause class struggle. By pitting the classes against one another, because it's the the classic and uh, the the prime element to communist infestation. And it's a disgrace. Anyway, uh, enough with Plastic Face Pelosi and her stupid, dumbass, you know, uh, bureaucratic family and that ugly, disgusting, despicable daughter of hers. And let's talk about a little bit more serious of a subject matter. And I'm talking about Iran. That's right. Iran is in the news once again. I know that they're having, uh, you know, some domestic problems with, uh, you know, some of the uprising that is continuing to be a thorn in the side of the Ayatollah. Uh, but it has threatened to shock the world on Thursday, which is the anniversary of the Islamic Revolution's rise to power. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up, folks, is because I think everybody should, you know, prepare for whatever may happen this Thursday. And the reason I say this, folks, is because I have been saying all along that Iran is doing whatever is within their power to induce an attack, whether it's through the Brits, whether it's us. It's got to be something Western. They are trying to induce some sort of a theater of combat altercation with the West so that it can bring their country together and nullify the domestic unrest that's happening within its country. Because I tell you, there is big domestic unrest in Iran, and I'm surprised that the CIA and all these other individuals in our Defense Department aren't uh, you know, funding these operations through some clandestine means. 
I don't understand why we're not helping and aiding these young people that are rising up against the Ayatollah. I have no idea. But once again, folks, the Ayatollah and Ahmadinejad and the Iranian Revolution is claiming that the world is going to be shocked this Thursday. All right? Shocked. They're going to be shocked. So what the hell does that mean? Well, let's talk about what Iran can do. Now, of course, everybody knows that I like to politically prognosticate, and I'm going to prognosticate something that Iran is going to attempt to do. Now, I will be shocked personally if they actually attack something like Israel, uh, which I don't think is going to happen. I think that if they're going to implement any kind of attack on anybody, it's going to be America on the Iraq front or on the Afghanistan front. Uh, personally, I believe it may be in the Iraq front because they had that big, uh, you know, cahoots connection with Al Sadr, that fat piece of cleric crap. You, you know who I'm talking about? That fat ass cleric uh, idiot, you know, who you know thinks he's such a you know deep member of Mohammed's posse or something. Uh, you know, apparently he's in big in cahoots with the Ayatollah, and you know he's big you know, with all the apparatus of the Islamic Revolution. So it would be completely feasible to me if there is some sort of attack on American troops or on Iraqi troops in Iraq to shock the West uh, and actually provoke some sort of attack on them. I mean, this is what they want. Do you understand? They understand their history. And what tied the uh, Islamic Revolution and, and, and what made them powerful was the fact that they were always at war. The Iranian Revolution was always at war. That's what made uh, Iranians uh, uh, so patriotic for this Islamic Revolution, was the fact that they were always on the struggle. They were always living in pain. They were always having to justify war. So once again, if they are going to attack anything, I don't think it's going to be Israel. And if it is, well, obviously it's it's going to be some major, serious international conflict going on. And I don't even want to think about the possibilities there. But if they do hit up anybody, folks, it could be uh, military forces of American uh, uh, of, 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 of American military forces in Afghanistan or Iraq. But I think it may be in Iraq. Now, if they don't do something militarily in that fashion, then they are going to convert uh, their method of trade, if you will, their, their currency of choice from the American dollar to the euro. I think they could do something economically in that fashion, you know, which would you know, drive the cost of oil through the roof. All right, or, or what it could do, it could also actually let off one of these nuclear tests, uh, kind of like what North Korea did to a certain extent. So I, I don't know what's going to happen here this Thursday, folks, but I would be very wary. I mean, I, I, I mean, it, the possibilities are endless. I think we're living in precarious times, and, and for all my friends that are living in Iran right now that are listening to me, do not allow your government to do this to you. Don't allow them to send you to a war that is nothing more than a war to keep them in power. All right? I mean, these people are nothing better. They're no better than Nancy Pelosi. The only difference is, is that Nancy Pelosi uses a bunch of BS to captivate the American people, not fear and intimidation. I mean, you know, she may not directly do that. Maybe some of her surrogates do, but uh, she doesn't directly do it. Now, what I'm saying to the uh, people of Iran is they need to rise up against their oppressive authority figures. And they need to rectify the contradictions that are within their society. And the contradictions that are within their society is the fact that you have an ayatollah that is supposed to be a pious religious man living in the lap of luxury, uh, you know, behind the guise of an Islamic revolution, behind the guise of some theocratic idea. I'm serious, folks. 
I mean, that's what these idiots believe. And I don't know what the hell's going to happen Thursday. What do you think's going to happen? Shoot me a tweet right now. Send me a tweet. Ghost politics. What the hell do you think's going to happen this Thursday? I mean, Iran's really uh, saber-rattling over here. I mean, who the hell knows what the hell they're going to do? As a matter of fact, uh, I had a feeling that we were going to have some questions on what exactly Iran was going to do this Thursday and uh, what exactly the message it was trying to send to the West. So we actually, uh, through painstaking research and uh, trying to contact people that knew people that knew people that knew people, uh, we were actually able to get somebody from the Islamic Revolution uh, in Iran to uh, actually uh, get up on here and, and actually conduct some sort of an interview or make some sort of a statement. Uh, I know this is a rather peculiar situation, uh, but once again, folks, I mean, I'd like to hear Iran, Iran's uh, explanation on what the hell they're going to do this Thursday and why exactly they're enriching uranium like it's going out of style. All right, now, apparently we've got Ahmed. Uh, I don't know if he's connected yet. Hold on, we got to wait for Ahmed here. I'm waiting for Ahmed. But apparently Ahmed from the Iranian Revolution uh, is going to make a statement on behalf of the Ayatollah and Ahmadinejad, and uh, apparently, you know, he is going to uh, reiterate what the uh, media has already been saying about uh, Iran and its saber rattling. So, uh, do we got Ahmed on the phone yet? All right, then we got uh, Ahmed. Are you there, sir? Hey, hey, hold on, hold on, Ahmed, Ahmed, are, are you there? Hey, Ahmed, can you turn that down, please? Just turn it down just a tad, all right? Yes. I am Ahmed from the Azrimian Revolution. And you, you are American people trying to talk to me. You're trying to talk to, to the Iranian Revolution like we don't know, but we are trying to do a jihad. We are going to do a jihad. And you need to understand this. Your Americans don't know. That's for America. The American people don't know what they're getting into with Iran. But Iran, you don't know what you're getting into with uh, American people. We fight for our lives. We fight for Allah, Allah Garbar. We fight for Allah. And we fight for the Ayatollah. 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 That's through America. You must understand this Thursday will be the day of the Islamic Revolution. And this Thursday we will show the West that we are not to be messed with. We are not to be met around with our Christ. Allah Rabbah. We are going to do a jihad on all your Americans that are there. That's through America. We are going to do a lot. And you remember not my words. The Ayatollah and Ahmadinejad, we are going to do a jihad. We are going to do a jihad. All right, just shut him up. Just shut up. Get, get it off. All right. Anyway, that went nowhere. Anyway, um, once again, folks, I mean, all this boils down to everybody paying attention to Iran. All right? I mean, let's pay attention to what's happening here this Thursday and let's make sure that whatever happens, let's not jump the gun. All right, these individuals are trying to provoke war so that it can bring their country that's already on the brink of civil war together. They're trying to prevent a civil war by trying to start international conflict. 
it's one of the classic methods that brought the Islamic Revolution to power. And I think it's very serious that we take this threat that Iran is trying to issue as a defiant move against the West very serious. Because, I mean, who the hell knows what these idiots are capable of, folks? I mean, you know, good Lord. But, you know, I'm sure most people really don't give a rat's ass. You know, that's what's really unfortunate. That's why I don't really uh, I don't really do these shows that much very often. I mean, I do them occasionally, but I don't do them as often as I used to, folks, because, well, you know, the, the spirit is dying. The spirit is dying because, well, frankly, folks, I mean, no one gives a rat's ass any longer. No one gives two rat's asses, so why the hell should I give a rat's ass? You know? Anyway, folks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this show short. Um, Once again, folks, I mean, I can go on and on. We've talked about a variety of different subjects this program. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of people out here that that disagree with me, that do agree with me. But, folks, frankly, I mean, look at America. I mean, look at America right now. I mean, look at the youth. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there is a good portion of the youth that is attempting to rise up. That's attempting, uh, you know, to that, that, that's attempting to facilitate themselves on a on a more political basis, on a more sound political basis. Uh, there are individuals that understand that we are in precarious times, but for the most part, folks, look at all these people here in America. They're complete and utter idiots, and we're ungrateful. I mean, you know, I mean, it's no wonder why we're in the situation we're in. You know, you've got idiots blaming people that lent them money. Uh, You're actually blaming them for lending them the money. I mean, this is how stupid we're getting. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody is claiming they're having a bad time in America, but the only reason they're having a bad time is because they're not having that $250,000 house that they financed for on their little $25,000 a year income. They're not riding around in their little 20-inch blades and their little Mercedes Benzes and all this other crap. They're not living large like they used to because, well, first of all, the economy retracted, and secondly, they couldn't continue to suffice those credit payments each month. And because they couldn't keep paying on something they didn't own to begin with, they got it taken away, and now these idiots have completely bypassed all idealism of capitalism. And they are trying to obtain those materials that they got taken away that wasn't even theirs to begin with. They're trying to get those back through communism, socialism. They don't care how they get it back. They just want it back. I mean, you actually got idiots who think they're ballers. They think they're big-time ballers on food stamps and food cards. You got idiots that actually think that they're living large off of, you know, sitting in a project home or sitting, uh, you know, in a upper middle class or middle or upper class community via housing voucher programs. I mean, you got individuals who are collecting entitlements who actually believe that they are entitled the same thing as those that work hard for their money. And, folks, it doesn't seem like anybody really gives a rat's ass that these people are taking us for all they're worth, or all we're worth, I should say. Nobody nobody gives a rat's ass. Nobody cares that we've got dishrag whore mothers shitting out children for the sake of making money. I mean, these dishrag whore mothers uh, are, are trivializing the whole concept of life. They're trivializing the whole concept of life by shitting out these children like they're going out of style. And on top of which, a lot of these dirty-ass, dishrag, whore, uterus-infected mothers are having children that they know they can't afford, that they know they don't have a sufficient amount of income to support. But they do it anyway, and it's child abuse, folks. I don't understand why Octomom and and, and all these other dishrag whore mothers who continue to have children that they can't afford, why these people aren't thrown in prison. I don't understand why we have a leftist regime that is trying to induce class warfare by, you know, taking people who would otherwise be in poverty-stricken areas where they belong, 
they're actually putting these people in upper middle class to upper class neighborhoods via housing voucher programs and all the other entitlements that they can uh, obtain. And, 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 you know, you would think that, you know, because the liberals are supposedly having a heart with the poverty in America or the poor in America, and they're removing them from their so-called poverty-stricken parts of town and putting them in the higher parts of town, do these people change their ways in any fashion? Do they stop tagging? Do they stop drinking, uh, you know, uh, 40 ounces and hanging out on the corner? No, they don't. Do they stop their criminal activity? Absolutely not. But you see, folks, you've got hard-working people, hard-working people. That's who I speak for. That's who I'd fight for, and that's who I'd fight with, the hard-working people in America that have never taken an entitlement, that are law-abiding citizens, that are tax-paying, hard-working American people, that are being taken advantage of by not only the bureaucrats that are in power today in Washington, but the Wall Street bankers that have raided our tax-paying system and the moochers, and let me repeat that again, the moochers of society that like to fall back on that little classification of poor in America. All these individuals are milking our tax-paying system. Meanwhile, we're just sitting back and allowing it to happen. I've been screaming about this for over four or almost four years. And look at you idiots. You people don't give a rat's ass. You don't care. You don't care. Why should I care? Why should I continue to come up on here and conduct these broadcasts when you people are morons? I mean, you people are like you're in like some fraternity house taking a paddling to the ass asking, please, brother, may I have another when it comes to this garbage that's being implemented here in America. I don't know what it's going to take. All right. Well, I don't know what it's going to take for you people to rise up and start realizing that, hey, wait a minute, there's something fishy going on here. There's something leftist going on here. There's something Maoist going on here. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and end this show early because I don't see a need to continue. I don't see a need to continue because the American public sucks. And you're completely okay with being ungrateful, materialistic, gluttonous assholes who would rather obtain your materials through dumbass subsidization and entitlements and socialism and communism than actually conducting yourself properly in the free market capitalist society that America used to be. So I don't understand why I should even continue to waste my breath with you leftist morons and, and, and you Sarah Palin worshiping assholes that are ruining our country with this popularity politics that you idiots are playing. We need true leadership. We need people that are going to conduct themselves as a government made for the people and by the people. And let's stop with this stupid, dumbass popularity politics. But it's not going to stop, folks. I've been crying. I've been screaming. I've been, I've been, I've been breaking stuff on the air for o almost four years, telling people to cut the crap. And you people just you, you pile on more crap to it. You people are a disgrace. You know, it's no wonder why we're being, uh, you know, imploding from the inside out. And let me tell you, no outside entity is going to save us, folks, all right? I mean, everyone from, from the outside world, everybody in the international community can see us going down. And is anybody giving us a hand up? No. Is anybody going to help us? No. We have to help ourselves. And if we're not going to help ourselves, well, then what good are we? And what, well, then why do we even need freedom for anyway? If we're not going to help ourselves, if we're not going to be true patriotic American individuals, if we're not going to preserve the Constitution, and if we're not going to demand free market capitalism, well, then what good are we? What good are you? What good are your children? What good is your family? If you're not going to embrace free market capitalism and the American Constitution, what good are you? You're nothing more than scum. You're nothing more than a piece of crap that belongs a victim in Maoist society. 
Because as far as I'm concerned, I will not sit here and continue on broadcasting if you morons are going to accept this ridiculous leftist crap. I mean, granted, there are a few of you individuals, far and few between, there are a few of you individuals that are getting vocal and trying to highlight the contradictions, but God damn it, there's not enough of you. Anyway, folks, I don't know when I'm going to conduct another broadcast. Keep up to date with me at the blog, ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. That, once again, that's ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And, of course, follow me on Twitter, folks. It's the best opportunity to figure out when I'm going to conduct these broadcasts. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. And, of course, the email address, the same thing, ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. Anyway, long live the true conservative movement and, of course, death to feminism. A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolored paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how.